Well, now we're going to have uh, Maria Jose talking about do it yourself, uh, how home automation with microcontrollers and circuit Python. Hello, Maria, how are you? Really good. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Where are you streaming from? Um, from Berlin. From Berlin? Oh, wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, there they are. A bit cloudy. Hmm? How's the weather over there? Oh, it's kind of weird. Is this kind of day that it's not sunny? It's not cloudy. Well, but it's warm. But it's really warm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Amsterdam and it's uh, <laughs> quite the same. I hope oh, we have okay. some uh, sunlight soon. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So now the screen will appear. Good luck. And let's begin. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so, so excited to be here talking today. My name uh, is, uh, is Maria Jose. I am, sorry, goes a bit uh, with delay. I am data scientist at Infarm, where I have, a, I work with really cool data science project. But today, I'm going to talk about what I am doing in my free time. That it's it's uh, the projects uh, with my own uh, with microcontrollers, uh, IoT, electronics, and this kind of things. What kind of topics we are gonna talk about today? Well, as I mentioned, we are gonna talk about microcontrollers. We are gonna talk about Python, do-it-yourself projects, circuit Python, and devices simulators. We are gonna see why. Uh, in this talk, this is included. And of course, we're going to see two projects to apply the previous knowledge. That will be a watering and also a cleaning automation project. Well, electronics and Python, I think that it's the first part to start. Um, but don't be afraid, because this kind of projects are really diverse. And it's true that even this talk is beginner friendly, or I try to do it beginner friendly. There are so many concepts and new things that sometimes we assume when you are doing uh, things that, uh, that people is familiar with. But if your background is not the electronics or engineering, maybe it could be overwhelming. But no worries, uh, I have a solution for you today. Uh, and for that reason, we're going to use um, a device simulator that will help uh, with this part. About microcontrollers boards, there are so many kind of uh, boards and shapes and, and the specification and could be also quite overwhelming. But uh, I think that the, at the end, you need to be familiar step by step. And at the end, you're going to finish ending, uh, finding your the microcontrollers that you need depends on the project that you want to develop. Why Python for microcontrollers? Well, it's because it's easy to learn, it's widely used, and has a great supporting global community. And this always helps to start uh, in a new world. But can we use our Python code directly in our microcontroller? Well, not really. We use MicroPython, that is a version of Python, or we can use Circuit Python, which is a fork that did uh, Adafruit, that is an open source hardware company, focused in educational purposes. And we, in this talk, we are going to be focused today in circuit uh, Python. Well, let's start with microcontrollers, but without devices, using a device simulator express. And first, because um, I wanted to give you the chance to be able to program microcontrollers today without having uh, the microcontroller or the device at home. And second, to avoid the overwhelming situation to say, OK, the cable, the, the I don't know about voltages or whatever, uh, then we're going to keep it simple in that sense. I'm going to introduce you one project that uh, developed, uh, was developed by Microsoft, that it was a garage project. 
uh, with also educational purposes. Uh, and this is a device simulator uh, included that you can include in Visual Studio Code. And there is the change of program three different microcontrollers, a circuit playground express, that is the round that we have on the left, on the right, sorry. Then we have the microbit that um, runs MicroPython and Clo that runs uh, circuit Python. We're gonna focus today in circuit playground express running um, um, circuit Python. Why? Uh, then so it's clear to me, it was because I got one uh, physically in the PyCon US uh, 2019. And also I have a kind of nostalgic relation with this uh, micro microcontroller because it's a playground as uh, its name mentioned. Then you can experiment with uh, sensors. Uh, for instance, in here we have the light sensors, we have a temperature sensor, we have buttons, we have input output uh, connections uh, that you can connect directly with, um, with uh, Google Drive cables. You have a infrared uh, transmitter, sound, um, and also NeoPixels. And also what I wanted to, to show today is that uh, the same microcontroller that you can program in this, day, in this simulator, you can develop at the end a real projects with a microcontroller that, as I mentioned before, it's a playground that maybe it's not the most efficient, but uh, you can do it. And this is great. To install the install to have the installation ready um, for the for the the, sim the device simulator, you can go the you can go to the repo that I create for this talk, and I try to explain as better as I could. Uh, also, the includes the official documentation of my of Microsoft, and I I hope it's well explained and. Um, you can uh, install it really uh, easily. Um, well, what is a hello wall in this uh, in this microcontroller? Because sometimes in talks people say, uh, ask me, yeah, but how I start, uh, how I wrote my first hello wall, right? Well, we need to consider that uh, in this kind of microcontrollers, we are going to have a while through forever. The, this means that our code will be exe continuously executing. Then it's a good thing to think in include a time sleep or something to break this uh, eternal loop. But uh, what is need to know is, uh, I'm not sure if you can see really well, this is the microcontroller, ignore all, the, all these cables, and in here is connected to the USB. Then you can connect directly your uh, microcontroller to the, your computer and write this code, and you're gonna be able to see. Well, in this case, it's just a print, uh, will not be mass effect, but for the other things that we are gonna do, it's uh, the way to go. But as we talk, uh, we mentioned, we are gonna go first for the simulator. Let's see, here it's, uh, I, try, I try to emulate the steps that you need to follow uh, and show you how to do it. On the left, we need to write our code, our libraries and what we want to do. In this case, what I wanted to do is fill some pixels with a specific color. And then, as I mentioned, I'm gonna include the sleep time to have control uh, that I give a time, right, between uh, one color and another. Once you write the, this code, you need to save it as a code.py or as a main.py and then execute it. That's all. Okay, let's go for a specific example now in the simulator. Imagine uh, that you want to um, detect or, yeah, you want to detect the room temperature um, using this uh, simulator. Well, in my case, what I did is, I'm gonna show you here the code because I wanted to show you how simple COVID is, um, uh, use it. 
First, we need to call the Adafruit uh, Circuit Playground library. That is this, a library, a specific library for this microcontroller. We are going to include the time, and then we have the while true loop that I mentioned before. Then inside we have a condition that uh, what I want to do is if the temperature is lower than 30 degrees, I want to have display the blue color. And if it's uh, higher to 30 degrees, I want the red color. This is uh, nice because imagine that you want to know if the temperature is really high in your apartment or in your living room or in your office. And then this is a solution that can help us to say, hey, the temperature is not completely right to work or to be there. Let's see how it uh, works. This is the code that needs to be written on the left, as I showed you before. And on the right, you are going to have um, the, this image. And then you can interact with this, uh, with the numbers. And hey, here we have more than 30 degrees. And then you can play around. This is not the only thing that we can do with, uh, of course, I, sorry, I spent so much time just playing with the temperature, but it was not uh, super important. Um, there are other things, for instance, uh, there are uh, buttons uh, that you can play and also change the colors and do other things, as you can see in this uh, short video that I try to press one button and the other and uh, see some pixels. Now, it's as, uh, it is in development still. There are not all the functions that the real microcontroller uh, has. But it's, uh, it's, I think that it's a project that it's open and people requ request the features and they are improving. This um, this is quite brief, I know, but I want to go also to the applicability of this knowledge to um, to the projects, to the real projects, um, because I want I love automate processes, and one of the processes that I automate uh, it's the watering system. In this case, is a solar powered watering system. Watering plants is challenging. It's really easy to go from over well, your plan, over watering your plant, to forget that you have a plan because you're busy, you have other things. And I, I ooh, look, I had a plan there. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, let's invest some time in automate this process at home. For that, I developed two projects in the past that I share with the Python community some time ago. The one is Plantaris that include different microcontrollers. Uh, I did some trials. Uh, I include IoT. I did develop a Flask application, a chatbot. And then I also implement a, almost a full machine learning pipeline. Uh, and I implement a neural network to detect pla illness plants. But uh, still, having all, all these in place was not enough because I decided to grow lettuce in my, uh, in my windows with this south facing. Um, but I live in Berlin that the weather is not stable. Then it's quite challenging, but I, we had really warm days with a, a high intensity of sun. And I thought, wow, I need to explode that. I think that could be really, really nice if I could, I could develop something really uh, more sustainable. Then the first thing that I did was to buy a really small panel solar and check if it was able to, to, to have energy enough to, to implement my watering system. The watering system that I'm going to show you is super simple. It's something that has almost uh, less components as possible. I, I try to keep it as simple as possible, but including the solar panel. Here are the components, the two rectangles of the bottom as the solar panel, and the, uh, 
the round, it's, um, that it's that is the microcontroller. Then we have this blue thing that it's a relay. At the end, it's a switch on, switch off. Um, the uh, white thing is a pump. Uh, I added a soil moisture sensor and some tubing. So, some comments about uh, this project. Um, the soil moisture measurement is really, really important in this project because it's, it's as I mentioned before, it's easy to be in the stream, in the stream if, the, if the temperature is really high or if you go outside for the weekend or whatever and you forget you, that you have plants, then uh, it's important to know when your plant will be happy. And this will depend on the weather will be the pen of the soil. And this will be also depends of the plant that you have because it's not the same I let, I let use than um, a, a strawberry, for instance. Then know your plan will give you success in this kind of project. Then these are the components and this is the way that they are co connected, of course, so have in mind that this is a prototype, and for that reason, I have all the cables there. Uh, this is not the definitive uh, uh, emplacement. It's just to be sure that I could to have automated uh, watering uh, powered with solar energy. Then we have the solar panel A connected with the pump that it's in B that the pump that it's in B is connected with D that it's the microcontroller. At the, at the same time, the microcontroller that is in D gets the energy from the solar panel that is the C. And then also we have E that is the moisture sensor that, of course, needs to go to the microcontroller. In such a case, we have also the relay that is the switch on to itself. Okay, well, let's see how this looks like. Um, uh, in a video. Yeah. Uh, something that I mentioned is that, the, and it's important, it's in the in, in the tube, there are some uh, small holes and then uh, the water drops by, by these uh, holes. Then the water goes by the tube and, and at the same time, uh, water of all the soil. Yeah, and that uh, and that was the watering. And how looks the code? Uh, the code is quite simple again. Uh, we need to import some libraries. Then um, establish uh, the relay where it is connected uh, in the board. I instantiate it, and then we have the sensor in this case. Uh, what is tricky and it's more experimental is the wait time, the watering time and the dried value. That are values that you need to uh, get them experimentally. Of course, the manufacturers usually give uh, some values and also in tutorials has some values and that, but I can tell you that uh, depends a lot of your case and uh, we mentioned before you uh, with the soil moisture we are measuring the conductance this means that um, the depends of your soil if you change the type of soil or the brand of soil you are going to have different values the important well then this is, a, of course, this is a, the same code. Sorry, I didn't mention, but uh, I had not the space enough in the slide. Then what we have is uh, uh, the while loop and the conditions that is say, okay, is the uh, is the value uh, the from the sensor is lower than the dried value. We are gonna uh, water our plants, and if not. Will be uh, the relay will be closed and will not be water. Yeah, that was uh, one of the projects that you can develop just with the uh, same playground uh, microcontroller, but it's not the only one. You can automate more things at home. 
And here came another interesting topic, that it's the cleaning. We are busy in our lives and there are so many cool things to do in life. And I decided that I wanted to automate the cleaning process. Um, for that reason, I think that it was also an excuse uh, because uh, I decided to, to, to build uh, a robot. And this was the first thing that I did. I said, okay, I'm going to build a robot and then the robot can clean my apartment and I will be happy. Um, then uh, this, uh, this was the first version. Um, as you can see, it su was super big. My apartment is really small <laughs> and this was a problem. Also, the the superficial the um, the area that covered the the cleaning was not the best. Okay, it was kind of okay. We we'll try, but no, we need to improve that because the goal is clean the apartment, not just have fun building uh, robots. Um, yeah. Then here we have a before and an after. As you can see, the lockdown also affect to my robot. Uh, no, it's a joke. It's just um, what I decide is just take a mop directly. I took a mop I and I build um, a robot and I implement the robot and I fuse the robot with the mop. Uh, more functional, even cheaper and faster to do it. Something interesting that uh, has this robot is the ultrasonic distance sensor. In this case, is this HCSR04. That is an ultrasonic. And uh, if you are not familiar with this kind of uh, sensors, it's the same of, of, it's a similar mechanism that has the BAT, for instance. Um, in the, the device sent a pulse and of ultrasound and then the once there is an object this pulse it's a robot and it's received by the sensor this means that the, the environmental conditions affect to this dynamic this means that if you are uh, implementing your your um, your robot or the, your code uh, in summer or in some specific location will be different. Uh, the behavior will not be the same if you uh, try it later um, uh, in winter, for instance. OK, this is uh, something that was important. And then I thought, mm, there was another option. There was another reason why I used this uh, specific sensor. It's because if you want to have a famous uh, robot you need to have this cute, uh, um, this cute face of robots. Uh, it's also a joke, but uh, was quite cute to see it. Again, really simple robot. Um, ultrasonic sensor, as you can see in here on the the top, we have the servo a uh, servo motor here, and then we have some motors and three uh, wheels. That's all. And let's see what happened when I added to the mob and this kind of things. Of course, in here, I tested with uh, the normal thing that you have at home, right? So uh, in, in your floor, some plants, a fan, a BB-8, normal things, you know. In this case, I implemented uh, the robot in a way that uh, advanced uh, uh, stop it, check it, and continue. Uh, for that reason, has this uh, stop between the movements. Because, and as you can see in here, um, BB-8 was ignored completely. Um, that was because at the beginning, I was thinking in that also a uh, servo or something that could help in the cleaning. But still, it's not, uh, I didn't like it at the end, the, this idea. And it's really uh, functional. This mop, uh, this automatic mop, it it's, works really good. 
Then I added the most direct uh, approach that is go directly. And then once uh, find something, I stop it, check it, and continue to other side. The, the decision where um, where to go, this is um, this is the logic. The distance uh, once check the this once you stop it and detect the, there is an object, check to the left and then to the right. And the decision where should go, it's based on where is the higher distance. We want to go always where is the emptiness. Hey, Maria, sorry to interrupt. It's the last uh, slide. Oh, OK. Then, uh, okay. I, I just wanted to say, if you are not convinced still uh, in build your robot, I can give you here just an excuse. You can create your own memes and be just happy for hours. And, and with that, it, uh, I would like to finish. Thank you. Well, that's uh, super amazing. I, I actually <laughs> thought about all of those ideas, but uh, you actually implemented all of them. <laughs> super cool. Uh, so we have a couple of questions, uh, quite a lot. Uh, we don't have much time left, so the mm -hmm. discussion can continue in the breakout room in the, uh, Optiver. Okay. Uh, but here goes the first uh, question is, can the prototype survive the uh, rainfall? Um, I think it means the, yeah. the, uh, the water in I suppose, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, well, um, I try, I, I forget it. I need to say that I forget it the other day uh, and I start to drain a lot and survive it. And this is a good sign. If it's, uh, the, it's a storm, I am not sure. It will be sure, but uh, normal rain, it, uh, it still survives. It's okay. <laughs> the next one, can you use circuit Python with any microcontroller or just certain developer kits? Uh, good question. Um, that are not for all of them. Uh, are available because uh, you're gonna need uh, some libraries, but. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, microcontrollers. I think that they cover, I don't remember exactly the name, but uh, the number right now, but it's uh, it's a huge amount. But if you have a specific question for some specific microcontroller, just let me know, or I can send you directly the, um, the sources and the links. Okay, perfect. I think we have one more question. Uh, how hard is to move the code from the simulator to a real device? Do we need to make any changes? No, you just need to copy paste. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it, that is fantastic. For that reason, you can play first with the uh, emulator, learn, and then just move it to the copy paste to your code. Um, to OK. Device. Thank you so much, uh, Maria. Super nice. Thank you.